My dad gave me his old Pentax 35mm camera when I was when I was pretty young actually, probably about 15, 16. So I kind of got into it then. And then I carried on, did it at school with like photography and art lessons and uh, then went to university and studied uh, design and photography. So the Mighty Boosh was created by Noel Fielding and Julian Barrett. Um, they uh, started it in the late 90s. Um, they were both stand-up comedians who uh, liked each other's material, so they started writing together. Um, I was living with Noel at university at the time, and we were proper comedy train spotters, so we were following everything to do with the UK comedy, basically. And we went to see Julian doing stand-up because he was doing it um, a couple of years before Noel started. Um, then Noel got into his stand-up, and then they met and created the Boosh, and then I got involved. Um, we used to do a night in a club called the Hen and Chickens, which was in North London, above a pub in a theatre, and try stuff out, um, muck around and play stupid characters and do music and form together a show for their Edinburgh shows. So they did, um, their first uh, Edinburgh show was, I think in 90, oh God, I don't want to say because I'll get it wrong and everyone will go online and tell me it was wrong, but around 90, 1998, I think they did the Mighty Boosh, which starred Rich Fulcher. Um, and then they did Arctic Boosh, was just the two of them, which was the following year. And then they did Auto Boosh, which was me, Noel and Julian. Um, so I got involved then properly in the show. Uh, I'd lived in Australia at the end of the 90s and um, I came back from Australia and got involved with that then at the early noughties and then we came back down, the three of us, with um, Auto Bush and did a run at the Melbourne Comedy Festival in 2001. And um, yeah, that's kind of the, that was, they'd already come down uh, with Arctic Bush and there was a bit of a following going there. Um, but then there was Australian kind of humour really kind of, then they really embraced it, so it kind of hit with a lot of uh, yeah, a lot of Australians and we were getting like great feedback and yeah, they've kind of loved it, loved it ever since. And after the radio show and the TV shows, um, which I know have been sh shown down here um, and I know Noel's come down and done a few stand up uh, shows himself. Um, but yeah, I've basically put together a kind of, um, you know, a good, I've had a camera with me since day one of like being involved, even before I got involved in the show directly I was you know hanging out with them and helping out with stuff and because I did all the design for the merchandise and and worked with Noel on the look and feel for the DVDs and the posters and everything um I've kind of been around them them since the birth really so I've got shots since uh, late 90s and there's like shots from there all the way up to like 2012 kind of trying to think when I'm looking around but yeah it's like over 50 pieces here in this exhibition um, like as uh, like little moments along that entire journey um, and I've just yeah I brought it down with behind the gallery and Steve and more um, bringing it to the Australian people again and I've been kind of blown away by how much interest there's been really I'm mean, being a cynical a pessimistic Englishman I was like does anyone care anymore but like yeah it's been amazing everyone's been really really complimentary of the work um, and yeah, it's just exciting to be down here in Australia, bringing a bit of boost to the Aussies again. I was going through everything. I mean, I've got so many, like too many really to kind of, <laughs> to properly like look at. <laughs> Sounds ridiculous, but you know, when you've been shooting for 20 years, you, uh, you put together quite a few uh, shots. <laughs> and I wanted to bring down some favorites that I knew, like some of my favorites and some of the fan favorites I know that have been in the book and have been like um, like online and stuff and seen in various merchandise and book, um, like kind of DVD stuff, paraphernalia. But I also wanted to bring some new stuff down. Um, so there's, there are some shots that uh, have never been seen before. I think it's probably about 50-50. Um, and some that I surprised myself with finding, <laughs> finding that I hadn't even remembered taking or I hadn't ever seen before. I mean, it makes me sound like I'm really unorganized, but I've got like files and files and backup drives and backup drives and, and drawers full of neg sheets and 
Um, you just occasionally stumble on one that you haven't really seen before or really properly looked at before. And there's a couple here that I was like really kind of quite pleased and surprised to have found. So it's nice to show those and they've been getting some good feedback. There's also some from Australia as well. There's like Noel at um, Luna Park back in the early noughties, I think, when we came down to do the gala. Uh, and yeah, just, you know, just general mix of characters. And I know there's a lot of love for old Greg and Tony Harrison down here for some reason. I don't know their favorite characters, but yeah, there's a few of those. And uh, yeah, it's like, um, just tried to do that kind of good mixture of favorite characters, a few behind the scenes kind of shots and yeah, just to get across that kind of fun, silly, you know, intimate. That's a uh, next sheet from the pilot. Yeah, so 20 years ago, it's mad. Um, I don't know, I, I loved that whole time. I mean, it's really different that, you know, the live stuff when we were doing Edinburgh and coming down to Melbourne with Autobush was like, um, was really special in that it was really raw and it was really low key and quite small crowds. Um, and then when we did the radio show, that, that was a completely different like kind of um, vibe in terms of having fun with the medium of like when Noel and Julian were writing jokes where Bob Fossil's in a helicopter, it's easy to do with a sound effect. You know, the radio format is just perfect for it because you don't have to then spend a load of money trying to make that visual work. You can just do it with sound effects. Um, and that was fun just doing that in, I remember they, they kind of originally went into a BBC studio to do that um, and found that it just was not an environment for them to work in. So they built a little studio themselves in Shoreditch out the back of some like hired office and um, we'd go and record stuff in like a little toilet that had just like load of curtains and egg boxes up as a makeshift kind of recording studio. But because it was in an environment where we could all muck about and they could riff off each other without it being in a studio behind glass and feeling really corporate, um, Rich and Mike and Mike and Noel and Julian would just, um, would just feel a little bit more like kind of bushy, which was just a kind of general thing. Like when we then went to TV, I remember like you get people um, come in like really good cost professional costume makers and set builders. And um, I remember like with the Mod Wolves, for instance, like Noel and Julian had written this, the whole Mod Wolves scene. And then you get um, like costume people come and props people come with these amazing wolf heads, masks. And they were incredible, but they weren't bushy. So like Noel would kind of go, I love them, but they're too finished. And it was a kind of general thing where you then have to like cover it in paint and pull hair out and like poke an eye out and put a polo on it and a bit of gaffer tape around it. And then that became bushy. So that was all like kind of amazing to be part of that kind of hands on DIY vibe that we tried to get into the TV world. So all these different parts of that journey were all like really exciting and amazing to see it grow. I remember the first like one moment that sticks out is when we went on the first, like when we took it on the road for the first time and we were on BBC Three. I don't know what time, it wasn't particularly uh, main kind of mainstream or being seen and the viewing figures weren't great and stuff, but we went and did some rehearsals. Then we took it on the road and it was York was the first gig and we had no idea what, you know, what people would think of it. And cause it had just been on TV and yeah, that the first time those curtains went back and it was just like insane response. And then people outside, like trying to force their way into the theater and stuff. And so it was properly, wow, you know, like kind of smack around the face of shit, people like this. Sorry, my last word. Um, yeah, people were really into it. So that was a really amazing moment. But then even the 2008 tour when we were doing we were doing like like music venues like Brixton Academy, which is like iconic. And, you know, I was standing on the stage, like looking back down where I always used to stand when I go to see all my heroes play. So it was, you know, that was a pretty amazing moment. And O2 Arena and Wembley Arena. And uh, and then, you know, so and then again, like we went to America and did some stuff and we played at the Roxy, uh, which was incredible. And we were sitting backstage writing out set lists, trying to remember what we've got to do and where the props are. And then Robin Williams like appears in the dressing room, starts doing boosh impressions and you're like, what? So yeah, that was a proper moment of, wow. 
<laughs> you know, I grew up with Mork and Mindy and like idolized him. And then just to see him kind of reciting lines from the Crack Fox was yeah, pretty special. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was an amazing time. Absolutely love it. And the pictures bring that back to me. Like I love, love, we're all like so close, like brothers, we're like proper band of brothers and Noel and Julian created something so incredible. And like everything was done with mates, like Nigel, Nigel Cohen, who me, Noel and Nigel lived together at university. And then when we, when we moved from university back into London, we lived in a flat in Hackney and Nigel does all the animation of the show. Um, and obviously, so and then there's other, his wife, Ivana, does a lot of the kind of artwork with, with me and with Noel. And we've got um, people who help out with costumes and props and a lot of the people that appeared in the show were mates. So it was like a real kind of tight knit community of, of friends. Like we've got the people in the, when we did the last tour and we had music, we had uh, Dave Westlake on drums, which is, he was at university with Julian and they were in a band together. Um, and they'd play like various like characters and stuff that didn't, you know. So it was all just a real kind of close family friend kind of vibe, which I think is part of the warmth that comes out across through it. Um, yeah, so, I mean, I loved every minute of it. I miss, I miss performing with them. You know, we've still got this kind of hope that maybe one day we'll do something again. And we've got this kind of uh, album that we recorded. It's amazing that no one's ever heard. So, you know, who knows, we might be able to get that released and do some do some live performances again, but yeah, I mean the whole the whole journey. I'm so lucky to have been involved in it. Yeah, it's funny. I, when I, the first the first days, obviously, I was shooting film because I this the whole journey of the Bush is kind of was happening as that transition in photography from film to digital. Um, I still shoot film because I love it as a medium, but it's not practical professionally because I I shoot professionally as well, I'm a commercial photographer. So that's just not, it's not viable to shoot a film. So, um, and that kind of transition to digital uh, shows, I think, in some of the work, but I still love uh, the early stuff and the, and, the, and the kind of quality that that print, print film gives. Um, but yeah, I, I think my shooting style, I don't know. I, I think, I don't know if it's developed. I, there's there are definite themes you can see through throughout. And I loved, last night was the opening and I loved, there was a couple of photographers came and it was nice hearing them talk about the quality of the shots from a photographic point of view. And one of the guys said, it's not just, it's not just a bunch of shots of famous people. You've actually really kind of nailed some of the compositions and the kind of portraiture and, and the way you've shot things. And I'm really, I'm proud of that because it's, it's hard for me to judge stuff a lot of the time as a photographer, as part of the show, because I, I'm too close to it and I get um, caught up in the moment that it was taken or the character being a favorite character or the part in the show that it's depicting or that episode rather than from a photographic point of view. So it's really difficult for me to kind of judge and curate and Steve's helped me with that and just hearing fan feedback about what their favorites are. And, but it's pretty varied actually. You get, we've had quite a lot of um, like across the time timeline and across different characters and and black and white and, and color. Um, so yeah, I think I, there's there's themes going on in a lot of this. I use mirrors a lot, I use reflection a lot. You can see that. Yeah, there's a lot of mirrors. Um, I think that's funny in a way. There's an episode, uh, Mr. Susan in Mirror World, which is one of my favorite characters, which is in um, the episode Bolo, funnily enough, um, when they go to monkey hell and Limbo is full of mirrors. Um, he's one of my favorite my characters when he says, you failed to take into consideration my mirror balls. <laughs> and he squirts the little, look at them shine. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, so that's like, there's a mirror, a lot of mirror work going on, reflection stuff. Um, yeah, I don't know, I just like, I'm proud of the portraits. I'm proud of the, I really like the neg sheets because they show that progression. There's some real kind of funny moments trying to get that across, but also, Shots like um, them on the coconut shy where in their blue suits where that was obviously blue screen to to cut that out. So they're just their heads and just seeing those kind of behind the scenes. And Tony Harrison there just in, in reception in between shoots, just like talking to production office like he's having a dentist appointment. Um, and then the little kind of calendar on the wall there, the extreme sports calendar, which is my face in that. And that's actually my brother-in-law who's Australian. That's my picture of him surfing on that calendar. 
Um, just loads of little stories like that. You know? there's, there's a couple here, film references, like um, the shots up on the left there. Um, you've got Rich Fulcher as uh, the twins in The Shining. That one's called Come Play With Me, where I shot him. We were in this corridor, I think he was in Scotland, second tour, and I was like, do that, and then stand the other side and do that, and then just double expose them. And um, that's my Shining reference. And then there's a couple of ones from Killaroo where I was like fully trying to do Raging Bull <laughs> shots. So yeah, it's, um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't know if there's, I don't know if there's a, a, a definite kind of evolution of my photographic style. I think I've always had an eye for composition and uh, trying to get those kind of things in together with the characters. And um, I was just fortunate enough because I was there the whole time. So you get into places and you're in amongst moments that photographers who were just coming down wouldn't ever get in. Um, and I, those guys are always relaxed with me. Um, and there's moments, like there's one up there where Julian's walking off stage and I'm actually in bolo costume with my camera without the head on and Julian walks back, back behind the curtain and you can see the spotlight of Noel on stage to the audience and like little moments like that, which you'd never get if you weren't part of it. And there's, there's one there of Noel and Julian as Nana's just sat down in between shots and it's, I love the intimacy of that because that's basically J Noel making Julian laugh and it's really, natural that's that's just off completely behind behind the actual tv cameras i, mean, I, love, I love this this, this, this is, is like this is a real, real moment, moment of shooting for the, the pilot at pine Wood studios. studios and so, and so there's, there's a load in there, there that i love like, like you know, these, these guys, guys don't, don't feed, feed the animals, animals and, and there's black cross is steve benderlach who's, who's an amazing, amazing director just, and then richard iwadi and then the original black frost which isn't me and then, and then Rich, Rich Vulture, Vulture looking, looking like, like half the size, size he was when we filmed the TV show. <laughs> Bless him. And, and he's perm. He had a tight perm back, back in that day. day. I think it suits him. It's, it's a great, great perm. perm.